the idea. If you can't cut a plane straight up, she'll conk out every time. I know, Bob. I just thought I'd try a ripped off. Well, you stick a straight fly, Miss Miller, till you've had more hours. You know I have a good mind not to send your paper suit for your license. But I pulled out of the spin, didn't I? I did remember everything you told me. Well, sure, but you barely made it. Oh, Bob, I've got to have that license today. I've just got to. Oh, I see. You've already told your father. Now you must make good. Well, that's one reason. Bob, do I get the license? Yes. How far away shall I hold the receiver, Dr. Miller? Halfway across the room, Dr. House. We'll shorten the distance and hope for better results. Made what? My pilot's license. Don't you remember? I wanted to have it today to surprise Jim. Oh, of course. <laughs> I've forgotten. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm the one who should be sorry. I came bursting in on something important, didn't I? Oh, that's all right. Are you and Dr. House go right ahead, Dad. Mind if I watch until Jim comes? Certainly not, my dear. Certainly not. <laughs> that must be Jim. Turn it off, Dad. I thought you were in uniform. Well, I was. I have a medical discharge. Medical discharge? Father, don't you remember? I told you Jim was wounded at Guadalcanal flying for the Marines. Invited for bravery, too. Of course, of course. Oh, I beg your pardon, Doctor. This is Jim Hudson. Jim, Dr. House, Dad's assistant. Hello. How do you do? Jim is the son of one of my best friends, old Warren Bill Hudson, owner of the famous gun site mine in Alaska. Well, what are you working on, sir? We're attempting to transmit physical substance by light wave. We almost have it, but so far we've been unable to hit upon an element strong enough or powerful enough to counteract the pull of gravity. Well, that's amazing. And I call it the peritron. Well, would you mind very much, sir, if I, if I stayed and watched you work? <laughs> Not at all. You and Ruth stand over there. Well, thank you, sir. slips from our grasp. I could only find the proper element, the proper atomic combination. I've tried everything. I don't know where to go from here. Well, could it be possible, Doctor, that the substance you're looking for is in mineral form? Naturally. Radium is mineral, and that has energy, but not the particular type I need. Well, that's what I meant. What, radium? No, not exactly. It's, it's something Pop wrote me about when I was on Guadalcanal. Now, he hasn't told anyone else about it because he thinks he's got a great discovery. Well, well, what is it? Well, I can only tell you that... Do you remember old Britt Pop's foreman? Mm-hmm. Well, he was digging in number three shaft one day last spring, and he came across this mysterious substance, whatever it is, and, and he hit it with his pick, and it knocked him down. Astounding. Could you arrange to have a sample sent to us? It may be just what we need. Well, it sounds like it would be a little too dangerous for shipment. Why don't you go north with Jim, Dad? Even though there's nothing to it, you'll have a nice vacation. You need a rest. Well, how about that, Doctor? Well, if the story is true, I feel it's our duty. Do you have a place where you could work? Well, yes, you remember Pop's lab. It's about as big as this. Oh, excellent. When can we start? I won't rest until I can find out what this is all about. Well, transportation is the big problem. How much of this equipment do you have to take? Well, all this apparatus is necessary. If I may offer a suggestion, there's a steamship leaving from here in two days. And the captain is a very good friend of mine. Well, then that's fine. You arrange the transportation and I'll help Dr. Miller get things together.
just got word from headquarters. We're going through with everything the way I wanted it. But I've told you the real secret of the invention is only known to Miller. I thought you said you could figure this paraffin out. If you could take it apart and examine it. Yes, I'm sure I could. Sale. I don't know. Must be waiting on somebody. I'll give them guys five more minutes, boss. And if they ain't here, then we'll sail. Hi, sir. Hi, Doc. Sorry to have missed you yesterday, but I was busy ashore. Captain Leader, I would like you to meet Dr. Miller. How do you do, sir? And Mr. Hudson. Hello. Oh, here they are, sir. Cast off this gangplank. We're shoving off. We better check with the purser and see where our cabin is. Yeah. yeah. Any sign of that fog lifting? No, Captain. I think we ought to lay two until it does. This is the season for icebergs. No. We're too far south for birds. Keep her steady as she goes. Hi, I am. Matter, you nervous, Dr. Hobbs? Well, it's two men who came aboard. I wonder who they are. They really keep to themselves, don't they? Only time they come out of that cabin is to walk the dog. You worried about them? In times like these, the important nature of our work, I'm suspicious of everyone. I think I'll take a walk on deck. really jumpy, isn't he? Is he? I haven't noticed. How old do you know Dr. House? Mm. He was well recommended. Well, are you sure of him? One is never sure of anything, least of all of men. But don't worry. The real secret of the Peritron is known only to me. You're not as absent-minded as you seem to be, are you, Doc? Leave him abroad. There's no telling who or what they might be. If Miller and Hudson were murdered crudely. What do you mean, crudely? Ain't you ever heard of an accident? When will this accident happen? As soon as we get further north out of the sea lane. Are you happy now? Scientist Captain is seldom happy. Oh, Captain. I advise you to check on those two men and find out who they are. As far as I know, they're just two guys named Gray and Dunn. Are you sure the American secret agents are not catching up with you? You know, this ship has a bad reputation ever since those two miners disappeared overboard last month. I'll keep an eye on them. See what you can find out, too. Hey, we've been passing ice poles all evening, Captain. And that means icebergs. All right. Lay to until morning. Hi, right, sir. Strange the captain has carrier pigeons on board and is keeping it a secret. I don't know. Carrier pigeons are a respectable hobby. Maybe so, but we were wondering why Greeter doesn't send his messages by radio. Probably part of his hobby. That seemed kind of strange, though, didn't it? I don't understand it. Well, I wouldn't give it a thought. 
Well, gentlemen, I'm tired. I think I'll take a little walk around the deck and then go to bed. Well, I thought you'd like to know. Yeah, well, thanks, Dan. Dan discovered the pigeons. He saw you send a message. I'm sure now that he is an American agent. You go back to your cabin. I'll handle this. Captain. I'd like to have a little talk with you, if you don't mind. Sure. All right, Tom. We're alone back here. Just speak right up and tell me what you're doing on board my ship. I'm going up north. Anything wrong with that? Ever since you came on board, you've been snooping around. You got something to hide, Captain? Like maybe, uh... Carrier pigeons? Listen, you. Tell me who you are or... Oh, what? Uh, Captain, you can't move with them icebergs out there. I'm giving the orders here. <coughs> I've looked everywhere for Dunn. I tell you, there's something wrong with this boat. Oh, sit down. Take it easy. He'll show up. Oh, he's most likely to be Captain. No, I was on the bridge. The boatswain says there's no one with the Captain. Yes, the Captain had better be told. Perhaps we should see him this minute. The ship must be searched from top to bottom. Thanks. Moving again. I tell you, whoever's running this boat is crazy. What happened to Dunn? I leave him over the side. Will and Hudson already suspect something. When they miss Dunn, they'll cause an investigation. What's the difference? It means we've got to work right now. Now? Go below and send Miller Gray and Hudson up to me. Oh, not that way. You know a better way? Yes. And this is dissolved in water. It releases a deadly gas. Won't they see it? No. It's colorless and odorless. Now, if you could manage to lock them up in here. Leave that to me. Send them up. I wouldn't be too hasty in accusing the captain, Mr. Gray, is a friend of Dr. Howe, you know. The captain would like to see you, gentlemen. Naturally, he's very much concerned. Now, well, you'll get some action. Does he want me to? Yes, Doctor. A matter of routine, I believe. So, in view of the fact that there's a passenger missing from my ship, I'm going to hold you three until I get to the bottom of this. Clever, aren't you, Captain? We don't know anything about it. Well, it's all ridiculous. Gentlemen, make yourselves comfortable until I get back. We're locked in. What is this, a frame-up? Got the paratron? Yes. I also found his notes. Perhaps the secret of the paraton is among them. Get the paraphone on those notes and come back here and wait. I'll lower a rifle. 